Well, the ridiculousness that is international football is finally over. We can finally turn our attention back to real proper football coming up this weekend as Rangers take on Hibernian. Uh, we've got a positive Ridvan Yilmaz update. We've got more worrying serial Dessa's news. Yes, he is as bad as first published. Uh, and I'm going to show you some evidence to prove why I am greatly concerned about him leading the line for the rest of the season and hoping and why I hope that Danilo is back sooner rather than later. Oh, Abdallah Seema or basically um, maybe even Ali could get a fit. I don't know. We're also going to talk a little bit about how hearts are continuing to make a mountain out of a molehill and trying to use it to drum up a bit of, a bit of interest in tickets and also to try and drum up a bit of passion in their team ahead of our semi-final against them on the 21st. Um, in a social media post that is truly and utterly ridiculous and just shows hearts up for what they are fast becoming the biggest joke, not in Scottish football, but the biggest joke in European football. Small time, parochial, Mickey Mouse, 100%. Well, let's start off with the positive Rid Van Yilmaz news. Now, you know, obviously Rid Van uh, came back to Ockenhowie, came back to Ibrox um, after that knee, uh, that thigh injury that he sustained. Um, playing for Turkey against Hungary. You know, one of the reasons why I really genuinely detest international football is, you know, you're, you send your players off, they play for their countries, they get injured, they come back, you've still got to pay them, you've got to rehab them, and you don't get the benefit of them playing for you. You know, utterly, absolutely ridiculous. One of the reasons why I, you know, 100% hate uh, international football and just genuinely can't see the point. So, you know... That's a bit by the by, though. You know, Ridvan is back now. We've obviously, you know, we've got a, a job to do to get him fit and get him back, um, you know, as soon as is possible. Now, positive news came around the Ridvan injury. Um, a quote from the club that the injury was not as bad as is first feared. It is not as bad as Abdallah Seema's injury was, which is very good news indeed. Uh, he will be out for around seven to ten days, ruling him out for the Hibs game, but he should be in line to either return to the starting lineup or at least be in the squad for the Celtic game. Now, look, it, the likelihood is that Phil Clement will start with Borna Barisic in place of Ridvan Yilmaz, no matter what we all think as fans. I know there's some fans out there that still back the Croatian. I don't know why. He's been appalling this season. Um, and you've also got to carry into that, like I said, the fact that he has signed a pre-contract elsewhere. If you think back to how Morelos, to how Kent was last season, after they got Kamara to some extent as well, after they you know, announced that they were going to go, that had signed pre-contracts, that were ready to move on, they kind of down tools, didn't put in the effort, didn't put themselves at risk of injury because they didn't want to risk their big payday. You know, that's something that you've got to kind of think that could happen with Borna. Um, now, the positive news, obviously, is the fact that, you know, I think even if you play Borna Barisic against Hibernian, you've probably still got enough, we've still got enough talent to overcome Hibs. But against Celtic at the Park here, head, there is literally no way whatsoever you can start Borna Barisic. He has let us down so many times at Parkhead. It is untrue. I know I'm going to have certain fans having a go at me about this. But guys, go back and look at the evidence. Look at the evidence you know, of his uh, of his times at Parkhead. The number of times he's left players uncovered. He's not cleared balls properly. He's sat down on the job. He's just missed players. So having Ridvan back for that Celtic game would be absolutely brilliant and be the best news we could have. You know, Ridvan suits Phil Clermont's system far more than Borna Barisic does. He takes more risks with the ball. He gets forward a lot better. He defends a lot better. He's not afraid to take on a shot and actually get somewhere near the goal. His crosses don't tend to hit the first man or sail over everybody's head. Um, you know, this he is a quality player. He is a top, top quality player. Um, you know, he's, he's only going to get better and he's only going to develop. He's still a very young lad. And as John Suter said, you know, it takes a long time for players to settle into new environments, particularly when they come from different countries to Scotland, which is a very different footballing environment. And it appears that Ridvan needed all that time to settle in and to become the player that he now is. And look, if he is truly back in seven to 10 days, the chances are very good then that he will be back for that game against Celtic. And, you know, having this little man back in the team will give us, I think, a big boost. You know, yes, there's certainly hope that, you know, like I mentioned on yesterday's video, that Abdallah Seema could be back for that game. You know, we've also got to hope and pray that Danilo could be back as well. Um, you know, all very positive news. And, and 
it's about time we had some positive news on the injury front. I mean, we really have had some pretty shocking luck when it comes to injuries. It's like we've smashed the mirror, walked under a ladder and ran over a black cat. It really is some very, very bad, bad luck when it comes to injuries. So very positive update. Seven to 10 days would put Ridvan back in time for the old firm. Absolutely vital to have him back. Absolutely vital to have him starting against that lot from across the city. Even if you only get 60, 70 minutes out of him, I'd so much rather start with him. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with him in the back four than I certainly would with Borna back pass. So let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk a little bit about Serial Dessas. Now, I was scrolling through X last night and and I think the rain, the, uh, the Ibrox channel put it, very effectively the enigma that is serial Dessas. Dessas worries me he really really worries me um you know he is unreliable that i think that's the biggest word to describe and yes he has scored some good goals this season don't get me wrong um very few of them been when it really matters when the pressure is on but he has scored goals don't get me wrong this season i think it's 12 in the league um and he could quite easily finish with 20 but he's still not a range of standard now Dessas for me is a player who he just wants too many touches when he's through on goal. If he has time to think, he seems to go to pieces. And he, he just is an absolute enigma. He really is an absolute enigma. And it does worry me, the lack of cutting edge, the lack of firepower that we have up the top. You know, if we had Danio fit, if we had Seema fit, I, I can't help but think we would have beaten Benfica and we would have gone through it in the Europa League. You know, Dessas, for me, just isn't the man. And look, I know I'm going to get slaughtered by some fans. They're saying, oh, you're being negative again. Well, no, I'm basing this on actual evidence. Let me share with you um, a serial Dessas moment from Nigeria's game with, I think it was Mali last night. Here it is. So here we go. Dessas is clean through on goal. There we go. Look, there's Dessas clean through on goal. Must score. And where does the ball end up? Yes, that's right. The ball ends up somewhere in bloody orbit again. I mean, how many times have we seen this? This is classic serial death. It's clean through, must score, or at least work the goalkeeper, and it ends up going into orbit again. Something we've seen repeatedly for Rangers. Like I said, that, that is just absolute, pure, unadulterated crap. I mean, just... just. I mean, I've seen some people trying to defend him. Oh, it took a bubble. Oh, he, he, you know, he, he got pushed with... He should be scoring there. A top-class striker puts that ball in the back of the net. You know, that that's a fact. That is an undisputed fact. You know, you can't help but feel that chance falls to Danilo. You know, I know Danilo, Danilo is not, not Nigerian, but let's say that's a Rangers game. You know, that falls to Danilo. He probably scores that goal. Shanklin, he probably scores that goal. That is just appalling. I mean, and that is what worries me going forward. It really does concern me going forward. You know, that this is the man we're kind of trusting with our running towards the end of the season. And look, I think Kam Kamar Roof's going to have a big role to play. I think there's a lot of talk, obviously, that, that, that there's a lot of feeling within the club and within within the uh, coaching staff that Kamar can't play 90 minutes, that he can't play a full 90 minutes because of his fitness record, because of the way they're trying to nurse him and bring him back to fitness for the rest of the season and that he may be more used as an impact sub. I kind of get that. I understand that because if Kamar Roof goes out injured, that really is the end of the game. Um, unless, of course, Danilo returns. And, you know, it's kind of gone quiet on the Danilo front in terms of his return to it, return from injury. I mean, people have talked about Seema coming back. There's been a, a growing news uh, cycle around around Seema and his return, but certainly nothing around Danilo and his return. You know, it is worrying, isn't it, that, that that is the only option we've got at this moment in time to leave the line. And you watch that and you just see so many elements of a striker that wants too many touches, that that when he's given the opportunity to really think and to consider what he's got to do and be clinical, be decisive, he just goes to pieces. You know, he's almost Sakala-esque in front of goal. You know, we, 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 look, don't get me wrong, I love fashion. I love fashion. But fashion was someone who... When you gave him time to think, he kind of went to pieces a little bit. Fashion was much better at being instinctive. A little bit like Dessas, I suppose. But, you know, Dessas, in that moment, shows why you can't trust him. I mean, can you imagine it? You know, 89 minutes on the clock. It's nil-nil or it's 1-1 at Ibrox against that lot. He's put through, clean on goal, and he does that. I mean, you just... 
you worry. You really do worry when he is your best option up front, or not best, but only option up front. Um, like I said, I, look, feel free to criticise me for my views on Dessas. Please do. I mean, if you want to, that's fine. But I'm sorry, you can't deny he just is not good enough. He just is not a Rangers standard striker. He is not talented enough to play for this club. He is not clinical enough. He is not decisive enough. And please stop comparing him to early Ali McCoy, to early Mark Haightley. That is disrespectful to two club legends. Stop it. Please stop it. Now, let's move on and talk a little bit about the one of the biggest chokes in European football, Heart of Midlothian Football Club. Yes, they're back in the news. Yes, they're back trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. And yes, they're back working the same old story. They really are an absolutely gigantic, huge, massive joke of a football team. They really genuinely are. Let's have a look. So this is the incident. Like I said, Rangers put a mat over the Hearts Club crest because the final was taking place at Tynecastle. And as I said on the video on Monday, when a final or a semi-final takes place in a ground that does not belong to the two teams that are taking place, the tradition is, or the, what normally happens is that dressing rooms, the dressing rooms are rebranded with the team who are playing as colours. That is it. Hearts, of course, refuse to allow that to happen. Why? I don't know. They're small time, they're Mickey Mouse, they're Tin Pot, they're a joke. There's lots of ways to describe them. Then they come out with this today. This this is just, just pitiful. It really genuinely is fucking pitiful from them. Do it for the badge. And there's the graphic there. Do it for the badge. Semi-final tickets on sale Wednesday, 11 a.m. Yes, that's right. Scottish Cup semi-final tickets will go on sale at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Wednesday, 27th of March. Do it for the badge. A chance to, you know, inspire Stephen and the boys to victory. I mean, what a fucking joke. I mean, come on. Rangers put a mat on your crest because you can't walk across your crest, apparently. I just, I just absolutely despair. I genuinely sit here with my head in my hands and just think, oh my God, are you being serious? I mean, look... <laughs> Scottish football gets criticised enough, you know, particularly south of the border. I get a fuck ton of stick for being a Rangers fan from English football fans. Of course I do. You know, that's just stand by. Stand up loud and proud for, my, for our boys. But when teams are behaving in such a pathetic little manner like Hearts, it does not help the case of the Scottish game. It does not help show us up in a positive light. It does not show us up at a big as a big... As a big footballing nation, it shows us up to be tin pot in a way. And hearts are not helping with the image of Scottish football. You know, you cannot imagine, for example, any of the top six clubs in England behave. You can't, well, I've actually, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, let me widen that. You cannot imagine any of the English Premier League clubs behaving in the way that hearts have done. Number one, they would have allowed rebranding of the dressing rooms for a semi final or a final. Number two, they wouldn't be so pathetic as to go on and on about it in social media and use it as some sort of disrespect and some sort of formal insult on their club. I mean, it's truly pathetic. It truly is a complete and utter joke. And for them now to be coming out on social media and saying it's time to do it for the badge. Oh, come on. Seriously, if that's the only way you can get your team up for a game against Rangers, you've got problems, boys. You really genuinely have problems. 5 0 at Ibrox. Let's just think about that, shall we? Semi final defeat in the League Cup. Let's just think about that, shall we? Defeat at Tynecastle this season. Let's just think about that, shall we? Let's just think about the fact your results record against us is pretty poor anyway. So let's just kind of generally consider that. So, you know, look. Do what you want, but I'm sorry, you're making yourself look very, very silly indeed. Um, just genuinely stupid. Absolutely ridiculous. Unbelievably ridiculous. Um, guys, it's you know, we what it's what Wednesday today. We're obviously a few days away now from the game on Saturday, three o'clock kickoff at Ibrox. Um be interesting to see, you know, when Philippe Clermont speaks to the media on Friday, you know, what the situation is with these injuries. I think a lot of people will wait with bated breath to find out what is going to, you know, where are we up to with some of these players? 
you know, what's the situation with Ross McCausland after he was sent home from international duty? What's the situation with Dania? What's the situation with Abdallah Sima? What is the situation with Ridvan Yilmaz? Um, you know, these are all questions I think, you know, that are hopefully asked at the, the press conference and we don't have some of the other silly questions that get asked there. Um, you know, hopefully the, the guys who ask the best questions, the David Edgar, Stevie Cliffords uh, of this world, can you know, will, will sort of try and pry and push as much as they can to get as much information out of Philippe about his squad as possible. You know, who's fit, who isn't fit going into this game against Hibs and obviously then looking ahead to the old firm game. I mean, I think we've kind of got to put the little a little wall up now and kind of not consider that game on the 7th of April. The... the at the end of the day, the, the the concentration, the focus has to be on Saturday and Saturday alone. You know, getting back to winning ways in the SPFL, getting you know, getting the victory, uh, our, you know, under our under our uh, wings, getting it in the books, so that you know that we've that we're going we're going we're going into that old firm game on the seventh of April. You know, with with a winning record in the league again after that defeat by Motherwell. You know, you look at the fixtures that are upcoming um, this weekend. And, uh, and you know you consider what is what what are the other games are for this weekend um you know obviously our focus will of course be on rangers versus hibs that's what it has to be on because that's our team uh, so the other games you know the, the the positive i suppose is there that you know celtic don't play till sunday um so it gives us a chance to go back top of the league which is you know laying down the marker that when we're on the same number of games uh, you know we are ahead of them and that's a massive one you know the aberdeen play ross county heart Joke play Kilmarnock, come on, Killy. Uh, Motherwell play St. Mirren, Rangers, Hibs, uh, St. Johnston, Dundee, and Sunday the 31st, live on poor Sky, it's Livingston versus Celtic. You know, you've got to kind of think there that realistically, you know, Celtic are going to get three points there. Livia are a pretty poor side. Uh, so, you know, I think that's probably going to be the case. So, look, at the end of the day, you are probably, probably going to be going into that old firm game on April the 7th in second place. But that doesn't matter. A victory in, in the old firm game is something that we've got to have. I mean, I've said this often enough now, guys. We must win that game on the 7th. It's a must win. You know, I know it doesn't decide anything, but it, it's that marker that we lay down that, you know, actually, guys, you know, actually, we win this game and then we win our game in hand and we're five points clear of you. So what are you going to do about it? That's the focus. That's what it's got to be. Well, guys, let me know what you think of the stories we've covered uh, this morning, this afternoon or this evening, depending on when you've picked up the video. Keep your eyes open, your ears to the ground, guys, for all the great content from the channel. The best way to make sure you never miss out is to hit the sub and ring the notification uh, bell our channel stalled a bit over the last few weeks let's try and get that bit of growth going again let's try and get this channel growing and going in the right direction yet again thank you so much for your phenomenal support to this this point it is really appreciated and as always on the way out there's two things i ask of you number one is to smash the like why because it helps videos to grow when you smash the like and number two is to remember always we are the people mm -hmm.